Welcome to the Wonderland, where we bring you the things you wonder from around the world. Before get started, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss our video. Have you ever wondered why prices seem to rise inexplicably over time? In the 16th century, prices in Europe were rising sharply, and some people blamed it on currency debasement. But French lawyer Jean Baudin saw something much more significant happening. He argued that an abundance of silver and gold was to blame as these precious metals were entering Spain from its new colonies in the Americas, and then spreading throughout Europe. But why did this abundance of money lead to inflation? Baudin's response to the paradoxes of Malestroit highlighted the demand for, and the supply of money, and how disturbances to the supply of money led to inflation. His thorough study is considered the first important statement of the quantity theory of money, which states that a doubling of the supply of money will result in a doubling in the value of transactions, income, or expenditure. In this theory's more extreme form, a doubling of money will lead to a doubling of prices, but not real value. Money will be neutral in its effect on the real relative value of goods and services. The reasoning behind the quantity theory of money is partly based on common sense. Why is the price of a cup of coffee in a rich part of town so much higher than in a poor area? The answer is that customers in the rich part have more money to spend. If we consider the population of a whole country and double the money in people's pockets, it is natural that they will want to use their increased spending power to buy more goods and services. But goods and services are always in limited supply, so there will be too much money chasing too few goods, and prices will rise. This chain of events shows the important relationship between the quantity of money in an economy and the general price level. After Baudin, many economists developed this idea further and came to recognize that there is a distinct separation between the real side of the economy and the nominal, or money side. Nominal prices are simply money prices, which can change with inflation. This is why economists focus on real prices, on what quantity of a thing has to be given up in return for another kind of thing, no matter what the nominal price is. John Maynard Keynes's quantity theory of money states that an increase in the money supply will lead to an increase in the price level, but it does not necessarily imply that the increase in the money supply will have a direct effect on real economic variables such as output and employment. However, in the short run, an increase in the money supply can lead to an increase in spending, which can create a temporary increase in output and employment. This is because people who receive more money will use it to buy more goods and services, which can lead to an increase in demand for those goods and services. This, in turn, can lead firms to produce more output and hire more workers to meet the increased demand. In the long run, the effects of an increase in the money supply on output and employment may be more limited. This is because, over time, prices and wages may adjust to the increased demand, leading to higher prices but not necessarily higher output or employment. Keynes proposed that money is used not just as a medium of exchange but also as a store of value, something you can keep, either for buying goods, for security in case of hard times in the future, or for future investments. Keynesian economists argue that these motives are affected less by income or transactions than by interest rates. A rise in the interest rate will lead to a rise in the velocity of money. The fullest statement of the quantity theory of money was made by the US economist Irving Fisher, who used the mathematical formula MV equals sign PT. Here P is the general level of prices, and T is the transactions that take place in a year, so PT is the total value of transactions occurring annually. M is the supply of money, but because PT is a total flow of goods, while M represents a stock of money that can be used over and over again, the equation needs something to represent the circulation of money. This circular flow, which causes money to rotate through the economy, like the spinning drum of a washing machine, is V, the velocity of money. In conclusion, the quantity theory of money states that an increase in the money supply leads to an increase in prices, but it's not as simple as that. The real side of the economy and the nominal side of the economy are separate, and the velocity of money is not constant. Money is also used not just as a medium of exchange, but as a store of value. Today, central banks print money electronically and use it to buy government debt in a process known as quantitative easing. Their aim has been to prevent a feared fall in the money supply. So far, the most visible effect has been to reduce interest rates on government debt. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing content from Wonderland. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for updates, behind the scenes content, and more fascinating stories from around the world.